Hey everybody, um, this tutorial is going to cover um, using Agisoft PhotoScan uh, to use photographs to make 3D models from using photogrammetry. Um, and so what we're going to be working with today is a series of images that I shot at the Metropolitan Museum of Art of the marble bust of Hercules. So taking these images, I actually just shot these with my iPhone and it's a really old iPhone, so the images aren't the best. But we can still generate a decent model from these. So here's what we do. Uh, in PhotoScan, uh, the first thing we need to do is to import all the photos we want to use for our project. So right here is a little tab called Add Photos. You click on this, uh, locate your photos, and select all of those that you're going to use for your project. In this case, I think I have about 80 photos. Uh, 50 photos. Um, once we have these in place, take a look what we have here, uh, we can go ahead and go up to our workflow button and align photos. Um, just for this project, um, since it is a quick tutorial, I'm going to only use medium accuracy. Um, you know, the more detail that you want to utilize, you can change that from medium to high but it will take uh, quite a bit longer to process. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And it's going to go through and essentially figure out where all the camera angles are and also try to match points that are similar between photos to create a point cloud. Um, now this is a little bit of a long process, so I'm going to pause it while it loads and uh, come back to it when it's finished. Okay, so here's what we end up with. Uh, here you can see we have all of these points that represent our model, as well as these planes, which are the individual photographs. If we scroll through here, it shows which photographs are lined up with what. Um, we can actually hide the photos, this little button right here that says Show Cameras. You can click that off, and this gives a little bit better view of what we're working with. Um, if you hit the Shift key, you can zoom in and out when you click your mouse. You hit the control key you can move the model left and right and so the first thing I'm going to do here um, is I'm just going to rotate this to the top of the model and uh, because what I want to do is get rid of all the extraneous points that are all the way around the model so I'm just going to um, rotate this so I get a nice aerial view uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer here that looks pretty good. And then using these selection tools at the top, I'm just going to grab the rectangular selection and I'm just going to draw a selection over the top of the model. Um, and then this is going to select all of those points. And then what I can do is I can go up to edit and invert selection and then go ahead and delete. What we want to do now is clean up this model, all the extraneous points that <clears throat> aren't going to be what we want for our final model and um, when you're navigating make sure you always go back to the, the navigation tool uh, so then you can rotate your model and essentially what you want to do here is go through and clean up any points that aren't going to be a final part of your uh, model so for example uh, we have rectangular selection circular selection and it's um, freehand selection where you can actually circle different elements Get as close as your model as you can without getting, you know, you don't want to get too, too close without zooming in a little bit further. Uh, but you want to try to clean this up to the best of your ability um, to get a nice, uh, even mesh. So again, this is a bit of work, but uh, if you take your time and go through, you can uh, really get a nice, clean and even mesh. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up, uh, pause it, and come back and show you the results after I have it cleaned. Okay, so I spent some time cleaning up the mesh, and here you can see I've gotten most of the points away that are going to be um, not a part of the model. Here are a few little outliers left, uh, you know, in the scene that I might want to get rid of. But basically, you know, got it fairly clean how I want it overall. I'm not quite too sure about the um, geometry at the bottom yet, so I'm going to leave that for now. Um, the other thing that you want to do uh, before we process the next step is um, to 
this sort of works best if you go again to the top view so you can really see what you're working with here. Um, go to the top view and what we want to do is, is this box that outlines the project. We want to get this as close to the um, model as possible. So this resize region is the tool that you can use and um, you can just simply uh, scale it um, to as close to the model as you can without interrupting those points. And you want to make sure you know, kind of go back and forth between navigation to make sure that you don't have anything outside of that. But essentially what this will do is help speed up the process time by having all of your points within that boundary box that you're working with. Looks like I can go a little bit taller here. Just go a little bit taller there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So once you have um, your, you know, aligned, your photos aligned and your basic sort of mesh cleaned up, uh, we're going to go to the next step. And that would be going to the workflow again and to build a dense cloud. So here again, uh, it's going to take all the points that we're, that we're um, uh, signing as the ones that we want. It's going to take those then and build uh, an even denser uh, point cloud that will eventually become the mesh. So uh, here you can click dense, build dense cloud again. I'm just going to keep it to medium for now to sort of speed up the time. But if we really wanted a high resolution, we could we could go here and add it to high or even ultra high. Um, you can actually, once you have it uh, to medium, you can actually go back again and set it to high or ultra high, and it will be sort of that sequential process will be a little bit faster. So I'm going to go ahead and do OK. This is going to be again sort of loading the photos, processing the points. Again, it takes a little bit of time, so I'm going to pause it and come back once it's finished. Okay, so here's our next step. This is our dense point cloud. And if we zoom in here, you can see that there are lots of points there. Uh, and um, But it really, it's looking pretty good um, in terms of the final model. What I'm gonna wanna do here now is go in and clean up any other points that I may not need. So, you know, for example, as I start to zoom around this, I can see some of these outlying points. And again, you can further clean this up and um, you know, make it as precise as possible. I was actually cleaning up a little bit while, um, while it was still paused. And one area that I really needed to work with was the nose. Because of the undercut and the dark shadow of the nose, I needed to go in and sort of trim that a little bit better. I could go in and work with it a little bit further. So what I might want to do is just you know, get as close as possible, still be able to see it, and uh, rotate around and uh, you know, try to make sense of how the, um, the curvature of that undercut is working. So you know, I could go in, and it's a little bit of guesswork, but you, and you can always run the model again if you make it, if you make it wrong. But you know, kind of going in and cleaning up any of these extra sort of points, this um, cleanup work come, you know, is going to help the final resolution of your, of your model. Um, so now, once you um, are happy with uh, the dense point cloud, uh, uh, you can go ahead and uh, e you know, even though you you'll notice the top of this has quite a few holes, um, those should solve for the most part, but it, it would have been better if I would have photographed a few more images on top of the model. It was a little bit hard to do in the museum. Um, especially with the you know some guards walking around, but again, um, bet, you know more photographs underneath, a little bit further underneath, and more of them on top would have made it a better results in this um, in this render. So I'm just going to go ahead and process this now uh, because I'm pretty happy with it. So here again we go to workflow and build mesh. Um, the default settings of surface type arbitrary. Uh, source data, you want this to be dense cloud, and then again the polygon count for here, I'm just going to set it to medium um, and, uh, and see how we do. So go ahead and hit OK, and again it's going to process, it's going to um, take all those points that are calculated and essentially uh, draw edges between them that will become polygons and develop a, um, a polygon mesh um, that we worked with in Cinema 4D for example. And from there, uh, once we have our mesh, we'll also generate an image map, which will be the, um, the photographic, all those photographs sort of blended together to become a photo map that we can place on the model. So we have both the polygons, the geometry of the model, and a matching photo map. 
um, that we can also use as a bump channel to really help uh, make the model look really realistic. So um, again, I'll pause this and we're back. And so now what we have is a our polygon mesh, which is looking pretty good. You can also see it in this um, shaded mode, which kind of gives you a you know a generic view of what that uh, image map will look like. And here we can also see the wireframe. And so this again, you know, all those points, and then uh, polygons generated from those points. So the last step that we have to do, uh, we have this mesh, and we could export it now for for just the model if we wanted to. But um, the next step then would be to also build a texture. And so this will build that image map, which we will wrap around our object that we can use in Cinema. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this to build the texture. Basic settings are going to be good enough for what we want. We can always bump it up later if we needed to. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to go through uh, with all those photographs. It's going to stitch it together and sort of blend out different areas and assign those to the different polygons of the mesh so that it creates a really uh, great even wrap. Um, uh, this should be pretty quick. I don't know if I need to pause it or not. Maybe I do. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> so obviously I'm just working on a laptop. So uh, faster the machine, uh, the faster it'll process. Um, and so what we'll do next is once this is finished, we'll export it and we'll bring it into Cinema 4D and do just a quick couple of things so we can see how the model could be utilized. All right, we're done. So now we can see the image map as well, which looks pretty good. Um, you know, the image map does have some contrast in it. You know, we have some shadow areas under here. Uh, it's best in terms of lighting if you can find a source which is really, really even. So you know, an even cast, a really flat sort of lighting is going to be the best. Uh, we do have highlights, we do have shadows, and this would be even better if it were a flatter lighting, more even, less uh, sort of sense of that source light. We also have mixing of colors and things like that too, but pretty good for what we're working with. So now let's export this. Go to File, and we're going to export the model. Um, I found that the best thing to use, I'm just going to call it, I've done this a few times, so I'm going to call this Met um, Bust uh, 3. And I found that uh, utilizing um, OBJ's work, you can open that in Cinema 4D. Uh, 3DS I found to be the best model to use so far. So um, this is 3D Studio Max. And so we're going to save it as that file. We'll save it here. We want to export the texture as well. Uh, I'm just going to use JPEG. And it'll go ahead and export. And then we can go into Cinema. So open up Cinema 4D. We can open our file. Uh, let's see. Where is our file? There we go. Let's open that up. It's going to ask you the scale. In our case, I think it's fine for that. And uh, here's the model. So Notice that it brings it in sort of funny orientation based on the orientation of the um, photo scan. So what I'm going to do is change that right now. So I'm just going to um, go here, which is enable access. I'm going to click on this, bring it up up to the middle of my project. Um, you could go to multiple views just to check this out. I want the Y to be oriented in this angle. So I'm just going to take this, rotate it like that. Looks pretty good. Um, let's just do that for now. And then we can click this off and just zero this out. And then our model is um, you know, looking pretty good. I think what I want to do here, though, is um, change the axis again. I think I want this to be the front. Yeah, I want this to be the front. So I want Z pointing in that back direction there. So I'm just going to turn this. Enable access again. Turn this around. Let's go to the top view just to check. Uh, turn this around a little bit more. And a little bit more. And a little bit more. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and that looks that looks pretty good. Okay. So now I have uh, 
you know, the direction that I want to be working in. All right, so, uh, you know, this is, this is pretty good. So we render this out. We have a pretty decent looking model. Uh, we could go ahead and add some different lighting to it. So I'm just going to throw a target light in here. Uh, and uh, let's see. We will change the direction of that. The target light, again, uh, we can move the light and the target stays in the same place. So I'm just going to move this around. Uh, maybe something like this. Looks pretty good. And um, well, let's just put a floor in. Why not? Bring that up a little bit. Let's change this direction a little bit here. Zoom in and um, take our light and uh, let's just do a um, soft shadow under this out. Here we can see uh, the project now is getting uh, illuminated that way. Let's change the lighting around a little bit more here. So anyway, once you have um, the model in cinema, you know, you can you can definitely utilize the lighting aspects in those different areas to come through, you know, in really, really interesting ways. Um, you know, alternatively, you could um, take this light out and, you know, maybe bring something in like a physical sky, change the time of day, not midnight, you know, something like this, change the time of day. Zoom in, you can see what we have here. Again, interacting with the light, casting shadows. So, uh, you know, there's a lot that can be done with this model now that it's in cinema. Uh, also, we could get rid of the texture map and apply a new material to it. So I'm just gonna apply a, um, a white material. You can see this a little bit better and uh, see what that looks like. There you go. So there you go. So uh, working from PhotoScan to Cinema 4D, uh, pretty easy process. As we uh, work into this further, I'm going to give more tutorials about how to add more details, how to work with larger objects, how to do better scans. So we'll talk about that further on. All right, all for now.